Good afternoon and welcome to the 2021 College Football Playoff Semifinal at the 86th Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. It's our Monday media availability with number four Cincinnati Bearcats. Joining us on this Zoom will be Cincinnati offensive players, offensive lineman Dylan O'Quinn, wide receiver Alec Pierce, and running back Jerome Ford. Also occurring at this time on a separate Zoom are Cincinnati offensive coordinator Mike Denbrock, who will then be followed by quarterback Desmond Ritter. Please check your email for the login information to join that session. For media attending here, please make sure to raise, use the raise hand function to indicate you want to ask a question. When called on, please state your name and affiliation before asking your question. First up is offensive lineman Dylan O'Quinn. Dylan, thanks for joining us. Please, if you would, provide us an opening statement about the excitement of playing in the college football playoff before we open the floor for questions. Yeah, you know, uh, obviously this is an awesome opportunity. The uh, first Power Five to break through the college football playoff. We're just excited to uh, get to the 31st and play some football. Our first question comes from Gary Miller. Sorry, I had to unmute. Dylan, your impressions of AT&T Stadium, what it's like to step on a field where they've had Super Bowls and how, it, how you guys reacted to being on there? Uh, yeah, that was, uh, it was pretty cool walking through that tunnel. We came here for the Cowboys game last night. We were sitting in the, in the nosebleeds, and it was still awesome to see everything, awesome to see the crowd go crazy. Uh, really excited to see that in the 31st. Our next question comes from Chris Vanini. Yeah, um, you guys are obviously the, the, the big underdog coming into this game. I'm, I'm curious if that motivates you at all, if you guys feel like you need to prove yourselves a little bit on this stage for the first time. Um, not really. We're just kind of focused on being on us. You know, we've heard a lot about this David versus Goliath talk, but the fact of the matter is everybody puts their pants on the same way. Everybody plays the game of football, so we just want to go out and be us. Again, if you have a question for offensive lineman Dillon, please raise your hand. This time we'll go to Zachary Braziller. When you look at your running back, he obviously comes from he comes from Alabama. He was there two years. What? How much? How motivated do you think he's going to be for this game? Yeah, I'm sure Rome will be uh, pretty motivated, but I think he's just going to go out and do his thing that he does on every Saturday. He's going to go run the ball, hit the holes, run hard. Taking questions for Cincinnati offense lineman Dylan O'Quinn. This time we'll take a question now. From Katie Windham. Hey, Dylan. Um, it's Katie Windham with Bama Central. What have been your impressions on film of the Alabama defensive front, and um, what are the challenges of their pass rush with Will Anderson and guys like that? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously it's Alabama. They're big, strong, physical. Um, we'll have a challenge ahead of us, but we're up for it, and we're going to do our best to to block their defensive line and get our running backs to the second level and keep our quarterback on his feet. Um, and yeah. Another question now from Chris Vanini. Yeah, uh, obviously Alabama's Will Anderson, he you know, has a record for tackles for loss and they've gotten after the quarterback pretty well. What have you seen out of their pass rush and uh, the challenge you guys face? Well, I think they uh, get up the field really well. I think uh, they have some good pass rushers. They like to uh, squeeze the pocket pretty well. So we're just going to have to take good sets and try and take care of them. Any final questions for offensive lineman Dylan O'Quinn? Dylan, thanks for joining us. Best of luck on Friday. Thank you. Media stay with us momentarily. We'll be joined by wide receiver Alec Pierce. Once again, media, thanks for your patience. We're joined now by Cincinnati wide receiver Alec Pierce. Alec, if you would, please 
Give us an opening statement about your excitement about playing in the college football playoff before we open the floor for questions. Yeah, I'm super excited. You know, it's a dream come true. Um, you know, I'm really excited to be here. It's a great venue. They've Cotton Bowl's had great hospitality so far, and just looking forward to this week. All right, our first question comes from Mike Rodak. Yeah, like just what have you seen on film from Alabama's corners, uh, both McKinstry and uh, Armour Davis? Um, they're both both good players. You know, they both got good size, good length, uh, can both run. So, you know, it's just going to come down to making plays. Uh, it might not be as much separation as we've seen in the past, but it's going to come down to making plays. Next question comes from Skylar Dixon. Alec, you guys have had a little time to let it set in the major accomplishment that you've had here, and you're a significant underdog in the game. What, what's the mindset now that you're here and it's about time to put it on the field? The mindset right now is just uh, working this week, you know, going over our, our normal routine, practicing um, to further preparing for Alabama. So that's kind of what we're focused on right now, I know. Coach Fick said the morning's got to be when we're practicing. That's got to be all Alabama, all focused on that. And then in the afternoons, we can have a little bit more fun and enjoy the bowl festivities, stuff like that. Next question comes from Chad Brendel. What's up, Alex? So uh, take me through how much going against Ahmad Gardner every day has not only made you better, but made Ahmad better. I, I know we watch it in practice every day, but for maybe those that aren't familiar, just talk about the respect that you two have and how much you've elevated each other's game. Yeah, for sure. He's a great player. Uh, I think he's probably the best press corner in the country. Um, so, you know, going against him every day is an unbelievable look. Uh, you know, we get a ton of opportunities to make each other better and just uh, like work against each other and sharpen our craft. Next question comes from Chris Vanini. Yeah, Alec, uh, you, the group of receivers you guys have in that room, uh, not a lot of uh, outspoken personalities or kind of divas or, or, so to speak, from a position that often does. Where, where does that culture come from with you guys? Uh, I think it's just, you know, the, the mentality in the room, you know, everyone, like we, we have a saying, by any means or by any means necessary. It's basically just, you know, like whatever we got to do, if we got to go out there, run the ball a thousand times and block all game or throw the ball a hundred times, you know, that's what we're going to do to win. We just, at the end of the day, we want to win. So we'll really do whatever it takes, you know. And that includes like contributing on special teams, a big uh, emphasis, so things like that. Next question comes from Zachary Brazilier. Alec, how much have you guys talked about kind of the significance of, of, of being in this game, you know, in terms of, you're, you know, obviously you're the first non-power school to, to get to the playoff and, you know, how you guys perform could determine the fate of others down the road. Yeah, I don't think the significance for us is um, anything other than the significance of it being the college football playoffs. You know, it's the biggest game of the year for us in that aspect that we have a chance to advance onto the uh, college football finals. So. That that is itself is a huge enormous significance, and um, but other than that, I don't think we're looking at the outside factors. Next question comes from Tony Suklas. Yeah, I like. There's been uh, some other questions before this about Alabama's pass rush. Just does that put an extra pressure on the receivers to get open quicker? Just given that you know uh, Desmond might not have as much time. Yeah, I think, um, you know, just going to have to be able to just try to get open as best we can, um, whether it be early or not. I don't know if we'll uh, – I mean, t for me, I just control what I can control. You know, I run my route the same way, whether I know we, we're going to get to the good pass rush or a team that's dropping eight. Uh, I just try to get as open as I can, so. Another question from Chris Vanini. I know you just said you don't feel like you need to, to do this on behalf of all a group of five teams, but being a two-touchdown underdog in Vegas, something I'm sure you don't look at, but do you feel like you guys need to prove 
uh, in this game that you belong here? Um, I don't. I don't think we need to do anything different to prove that we belong here. I mean, I think we just need to go out and play our game. Any final questions for wide receiver Alec Pierce? Question from Zachary Brazilier. Go ahead, Zachary. Alec, what, what do you think it just says about you know your program and maybe the way you guys operate that you were the first team to break through? You know, the first non-power five to, to make the playoff. Uh, you, it, it means a lot. You know, coaches really bought in and got the players to buy in. It's been it's been a long journey. I know a lot of us have been playing here for a while. A lot of guys with a lot of starts. Um, so just kind of to see the program grow um, has been really cool to see. Question now from Zo Joseph Hoyt. Hey, Alec, this is Joseph Hoyt from the Dallas Morning News. Um, Desmond Ritter kind of just talked about, I asked him what the learning lessons you can take from Jerome Ford when it comes to Alabama and if anything schematically or anything like that. And he really talked about, well, we learned about the culture that Alabama has and what they kind of bring. I guess just from your standpoint, what do you think Jerome Ford's experience, you know, at Alabama maybe can teach you guys about being in the stage in this game? I agree with Des. I mean, I'm sure he, you know, Jerome's being there, he knows the culture, he knows how they work. Um, and I know they're a really well-run program. Um, so, yeah, I, I agree with what Des said. Look to you on Friday. Yeah, thank you, guys. Media, please stay tuned for running back Jerome Ford. If you have a question, please raise your hand in the queue. We'll get to you momentarily. Thank you very much. Start off with uh, introducing you. I should give you an open statement, and we'll go from there. Okay. All right. I'll look at you. No, you can straighten the, in the camera here. All right. We're joined now by running back Jerome Ford. Jerome, if you would give us an open statement about your excitement about being in the college football playoff before we open the floor for questions. Uh, very excited to be on the stage like this and have the opportunity to play a great team uh, in front of a lot of people. Uh, I'm pretty sure me and my team, coaches, everybody's excited for the opportunity. Our first question comes from Kerry from WVTM. Hey, Jerome, uh, Carrie Osset from Birmingham. I just, of course, want to ask you, how surreal is it for you to be with Cincinnati and to be playing your former team, but to be a part of this historic run for Cincinnati against Alabama? Uh, it's a great opportunity to play on a big stage. Um, I'm thankful for everything uh, Nick Sa uh, Coach Saban had done for me um, and uh, the opportunity to play at Alabama. But, you know, I'm a Bearcat, and I would kind of appreciate it if I got stopped if people stop calling me the Alabama transfer, I'm a Cincinnati Bearcat. But like I said, I'm thankful for everything Coach Saban did for me and um, the opportunity to play at Alabama around all the great coaches and other great players. Question now comes from Matt Baker of the Tampa Bay Times. Hey, Jerome, um, when you chose Cincinnati, did you have any inkling that this would be a possibility that you guys could finally break through and make the playoff? Uh, honestly, it didn't really cross my mind. Um, only thing I thought about when I came to Cincinnati is uh, how could I contribute to help win games and uh, win a conference championship. Anything else would have been a plus. Uh, we just took it, one, take it one game at a time, one step at a time, just get my foot in the door. I didn't really think much about a national championship or, or anything besides winning one game at a time. Question now comes from Andrew Greenstein. 
Uh, good afternoon, Jerome. Uh, congratulations on making uh, the college football playoff. Uh, a two-part question. Number one, can you talk about how you ended up choosing to continue your college football career at Cincinnati after deciding to transfer? And also, during the game on Friday, what is it going to be like for you to look across the field to the other sideline and seeing some of your former teammates and the coaches who recruited you out of high school? Um. Honestly, uh, coming out of high school, um, Coach G was a great recruiter uh, from my area. He came and he talked to me. Um, I was real high on Cincinnati, but I ended up choosing Alabama. And uh, when I entered the transfer portal, I knew that Coach G was still a, a great guy and somebody that, um, you know, a, a place that I felt that I could go after if when I jumped into the transfer portal. And uh, that's how I ended up uh, choosing Cincinnati. Uh, still had that relationship with Coach G. And I hit those guys up, and they made it happen. And then um, as far as looking to the other sideline on, on game day, um, it's a business trip. We came here to play football. Um, it won't be uh, one of those things where it's like, oh, my buddies are over there. It, it, it'll be just like playing another team. Uh, we came to play a game and win a game. And uh, you know, we're just grateful for the opportunity to play on such a big stage. Next question comes from Skylar Dixon. Jerome, as, as the season developed and it started to look like the playoff might be a possibility for you all, did you ever find yourself thinking about the possibility of playing Alabama, or did you kind of intentionally try to keep that out of your mind? Uh, we intentionally tried to keep it out of my mind and focus one game at a time. Um, you know, all the playoff talk all year, we, we just try to stay close to our brothers in the locker room and, you know, um, just focus one game at a time, one play at a time, one practice at a time, and be where our feet are and be us. We didn't really, I didn't really think anything about a national championship, take it one game at a time or a playoff game. And now that we're here, we focus one game at a time. Our next question comes from Gary Miller. Hi, Jerome, congratulations on getting here. Just wanted your impressions on Getting a look at AT&T Stadium and seeing a field that they've had Super Bowls on, the Cowboys are playing last night. Do you ever do any visionary things where you picture yourself running for a touchdown or someday playing in the NFL on that same field? What was your impression when you walked in? Uh, we came in for a game last night and we actually got to see them play, and it was it was like it was kind of surreal. It was kind of starstruck. Um, it was crazy just watching the fans and everybody go crazy and actually watching uh, players play. Um, I, it was pretty fun. I definitely, you know, if I'm blessed enough, I could see myself playing on a field like this in the future. Next question comes from Chad Brindle. Jerome, you had a bit of an ankle injury through the middle of the season. Um, how difficult was that? Uh, it was it was uh, it was more of a mental thing. Uh, our tra the training staff did a great job of getting me back as soon as they could. Um, you know they helped me every step of the way. Uh, it got frustrating at times, but like I said, we have a great training staff and they helped me through it. And we got back and we we started rolling. Next question from Zachary Brazilier. Will you be motivated? Will there be any extra motivation for you Friday? You know, to to go to face your former school. Um, I prim every game is I'm I'm real motivated to play. Um, it's nobody or nothing the team that we're playing could do to possibly add any motivation. Uh, I feel like I'm very intrinsically motivated, and like everything I have come from inside, and uh, it's pretty much I'm already motivated to play. Next question comes from Joseph Hoyt. Hey, Jerome, this is Joseph Hoyt from the Dallas Morning News. Uh, Nick Saban was asked about it yesterday. He said that he's really happy everything worked out for you um, and that you were able to kind of achieve the goals and aspirations for yourself. I'm just kind of curious, you know, when you decided to transfer, what goals and aspirations ultimately did you have? And, you know, do you really feel like you're achieving them now that you guys have made it to a college football playoff? Um, as far as goals and aspirations, I think everybody who played the sports wants to go to the NFL you know, win games. So um, just as far as my goals and aspirations, it was to go somewhere and contribute to a team and uh, help them win games in any way that I could. And I was just grateful to have that opportunity. Question now from Charlie Potter. 
Yeah, hey Jerome. Um, earlier, uh, teammates like our former teammates like Brian Robinson and, and Phil Mathis talked about being excited for you. Do you keep up with those guys, and, and do you kind of share that same sentiments, uh, enjoying seeing them have success? Yeah, uh, I keep up with them, uh, of course. Um, just before I was here, they were like brothers to me, you know, older brothers, um, people that you could lean on and um, that, that led you in the right direction. So, of course, I'm, I'm happy to see. I was happy to see them uh, when they won a national championship uh, last year and, you know, continue to be excited for those guys. Next question comes from Mike Rodak. Jerome, when, uh, when Nick Saban was talking about the portal earlier this season, he said sometimes players are a little bit short-sighted. They don't think about developing or um, competing long-term. Just how much did he communicate that to you, and how much do you feel like your performance has validated your decision to transfer? Ooh. Um, I think the transfer portal <laughs> uh, is – I don't even know. I don't know how to answer that question. Next question comes from Chad Brendel. Jerome, talk about the development of your offensive line. There were some moving parts and pieces early in the season, but it seems like they have uh, have really gotten it together of late and, and what they've been able to do in opening holes for you. Uh, offensive line has been great all season. You know, um, it takes time to really, you know, I guess get everything clicking on the same page. Uh, I think the season, this season, uh, every game we got better. Uh, as a unit, I feel like I'm an offensive lineman too. Those are my guys, those are my brothers. Um, you know, I just feel like every game we get we get better and better and better, and that's the goal to, you know, be as close to great at the end of the season as you can. Next question comes from Gary Miller. Hey, Joe. Just to follow up what I asked before, but he uh, and. Uh, Gary, can, Gary, can you re-ask the question, please? Gary, you're breaking up a little bit. Can you re-ask the question, please, from the beginning? Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Okay. Jerome, just to follow up to you guys going to the Cowboys game last night, just how did it come about? Did you get any backlash for going out as a group with all the COVID protocols? And what kind of protocols and precautions do you... Uh, our training, our training staff does a great job with COVID and uh, all like you know precautions and measures that we should take. And uh, to be honest, any questions about COVID would probably be better for like Coach Fick and our coaches. And our final question comes from Skylar Dixon. From you're in a kind of unique position, having been in a program where. The CFP is almost a matter of routine, and now you're on the one that's been the first to break through from the group of five. What, if anything, can you share as a message to your guys about, you know, we belong here and things along those lines? Um, sheesh. Uh, can you repeat the question? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Can you repeat yeah, the question, just, please? Uh, for being in a kind of unique position of having been at Alabama where, you know, these things are kind of a matter of routine and now you're in a program that's broken through as the first group of five school to get in. What kind of message can you carry for your teammates? Um, sort of you belong here. Uh, you, you know, you're, you're going to prove that, that uh, Cincinnati belongs in this kind of mix. Um, you know, we had, we had a nice season, undefeated season. Um, we just pretty much need to be us and do what we do. Uh, we don't need to do anything extra. Um, just pretty much be us. And, and I feel like being us will be enough to prove that, you know, we belonged here and we should be here. That concludes our time for the Cincinnati Media Session. Jerome, thank you for joining us. A full transcript along with video and audio files will be distributed via email and posted in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic section of the College Football Playoff Media Portal. To gain access to the portal, send an email to licensing at catapultsports.com. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you.